Right now we're about to delve into a conversation and this is about a silent crisis that affects millions around the world. Well, and if you're wondering what it is, it is period poverty. In a world where, you know, periods or menstruation are seen as taboos and women and girls, some women and girls don't even have access to basic menstrual product, proper sanitation, and even menstrual education. Today, we're about to have that conversation. And joining me in the studio is Mensa Thompson, Executive Director of Alliance for Social Equity and Public Ac Accountability. Today, he's not going to talk about politics. It's something different. <laughs> and Leticia Yerenchi, face of UPSA 2024, and Nihad Ibrahim, um, UPSA SRC Women's Commissioner. You are welcome to the studio ladies and gentlemen thank, thank you. you how are you how's everything congratulations on thank being miss UPSC. all you. right period poverty um what is period poverty thank you period poverty is basically the underprivileged who do not have access to basic menstrual health education mm -hmm. as well as menstrual sanitation products. Right. That is what we describe period poverty yeah. as. And why is it important to address this issue? It is important to address it because we all need to have equal access to basic menstrual health education as well as menstrual health sanitation products. Mm -hmm. But as, okay, so how, how does how does this actually affect women and girls? Okay. And so I have had <coughs> interactions with <clears throat> some young ladies underprivileged mm -hmm. mm -hmm. who do not have access to basic menstrual health education mm -hmm. as well as menstrual sanitation products and it affects their schooling, their education right. because then she's like, today I'm in my period, mm -hmm. I would not feel comfortable in class, so I'm not going. Mm -hmm. What if I stain myself? What if this person smells the blood off me mm -hmm. from the person sitting next to right. me? And so it is important that it is addressed so that everybody feels enough confidence, mm -hmm. have the youthful exuberance to embrace their period as a source of power to themselves. All right. So why is this issue actually important to you okay. as Miss UPSA? Thank you. I have had an experience where I personally had, I stained myself mm -hmm. on campus. That was in the first year. And it was very brutal because the people, the immediate people around me felt that it was a funny situation that how can you be staining yourself at this moment where everybody is well aware of their period cycles okay. and all of that. Right. And it wasn't because I wasn't aware of my period mm -hmm. um, cycle, it just happened. And so I think that if then I had extra knowledge, mm -hmm. extra education that right. Even though it's sometimes 28 day cycle, it can rotate, yeah. so I'm supposed to be aware. Yeah. That wouldn't have happened to me. And I felt some sort of embarrassment. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, what, we, what do people think that, oh, this is the lady who stained herself yes. that yeah. day. So I decided that it is necessary that we all get to have menstrual hygiene education. Yeah. All right, um, Mensa Thompson, I'm going to ask you this. Um, how does period poverty actually intersect with other social issues? It, it, it's a very um, serious situation. I mean, and I think it's one of the things that um, we haven't really paid attention to as a country. I mean, the statistics are there for everybody to see. Mm -hmm. If you go into the statistics, the number of young girls who skip school on a daily basis because of lack of access to basic mm -hmm. menstrual mm -hmm. and sanitary tools, you know, for themselves. You know, a, you, you'll be shocked. Um, the economic impact, we all know the economic conditions. You remember recently, civil society, a number of us have to jointly, you know, come together to advocate for government to remove the taxes, the taxes. on sanitary yeah. parts, yeah. you know. And people didn't really understand, you know, why, I know, sanitary part 20 cities 30 cities mm -hmm. you know but there are people in this country who cannot afford these things mm -hmm. and so the the socioeconomic impact of period poverty cannot be you know mm -hmm. um understated right. you know and 
that is why it is important that we continue to highlight you know these issues right, right. to bring attention to policy makers mm -hmm. that when you make the policies you must understand that there are people living within the various communities both urban peri-urban communities and even in the cities who either do not have access to basic sanitary tools mm -hmm. or lack the basic sanitary education right. to take care of themselves. And we live in a society where our parents don't have these conversations with children. Mm -hmm. Most women can attest that they learn these things from friends or right. even from colleagues, mm -hmm. you know. And so it is important that, you know, we highlight these things to the attention of policy makers so that when they are making policies, social intervention policies, you remember um, um, some time ago, the Ministry of Education launched a policy of free sanitary part yes, distribution yes, and yes. it was lambasted mm -hmm. across the country. Mm -hmm. And we thought it was purely out of ignorance because it was a fantastic policy. And we would urge the Ministry of Education to reintroduce sure. those policies, mm -hmm. you know, those interventions so we can help a number of young girls. And that's why when um, the reigning Miss UPSA yeah. decided to take up this project, we felt that no, this is a very important project that we need to support mm -hmm. her, you know, to make some basic contributions, right. you know, into the alleviation of period poverty. All right. Okay. So, Nihad, what are some of the potential consequences um, that are likely to happen if we um, ignore these issues? Okay. So, some of the potential consequences that we are likely to have when we ignore issues such as period poverty mm -hmm. and the um, huge taxes that we have on sanitary mm -hmm. pads is the fact that some students would um, stop going to school, like she said, because mm -hmm. it has an impact on their education. I mean, when I'm on my period and I don't even have a sanitary pad and let's say I'm using a cloth or something that can really sustain the blood, why would I go to school? Mm -hmm. Why would I risk um, being embarrassed by my colleagues. Yeah. The funny thing is that some females even um, tease their um, female colleagues mm -hmm. when they stain their clothes. So why would I risk the that? Right. Why would I want to become embarrassed um, on campus just because I don't have access to sanitary pads? Mm -hmm. And this does not only affect education, but it also affects economic activities of women as well, especially women that trade in markets mm -hmm. and other stuff. Because you walk around the markets, you sweat and all that. So let's take this Kaya girls for for instance. Yeah. So to some extent, you can even say that this even promotes a teenage pregnancy yeah. because some go to the extent of sleeping with men just to get yeah. money to buy yeah. sanitary pads and yeah. it's pathetic so it is something that governments really have to focus on even though recently when they were reading the 2024 budget the finance minister declared that they will not be taxing locally produced sanitary pads yeah. but that's not, that's not enough yes mm -hmm. so we commend the government for that but we plead that the government should really focus on not taxing sanitary pass at, at all. all yes right okay so now um you've spoken about what the government is doing now let's talk about what you are doing or what you plan to do the teacher tell us about this um that you're trying to embark on this journey that you're trying to embark on okay so i am starting an initiative mm -hmm. and i'm going to be focusing more on provision of sanitary pads, mm -hmm. like donation, the form of mm -hmm. donations to underprivileged in the society. Yeah. And even some of the privileged in, let me take UPSA for instance. Right. So I'm going to introduce like um, sanitary pad p banks okay. where you drop a coin in the bank and you get to take a sanitary pad. That is One. so because okay. if you just leave the sanitary pad there, Somebody might just take it yeah, away. take everything. But if it's in a bank, it's safe. Everybody gets to use it as mm -hmm. and when they need it. And for the underprivileged in the society, there's going to be lots of donations to the schools so that they can also have access. The ladies, mm -hmm. the young girls, can have access to menstrual hygiene products as well as menstrual hygiene education. Because like Mr. Thompson said, not all of us would get that education from yeah, our mothers, yeah. 
our siblings, some of us who don't have big sisters, mm -hmm. nobody's going to tell us. You're going to have to find out from your friends. Hey, how do you put the pad in? How do you do this? So we're going to need more resource personnel on board. We're going to brief the students, the ladies that, look, this is what you do on your period. This is not what you're not supposed to do on your period. You're supposed to make sure that during your period, you're taking your bath, you're doing all of that to make sure that you are you're actually keeping your hygiene safe by right. doing so. Mm -hmm. And so it's all about the education and the provision of menstrual hygiene products. All right, that so is how are you pad. going to um, get this products? How are you okay. going to get these pads to give out? All right. And so this is a formal appeal to well-meaning Ghanaians and everybody who would like to come on board to promote this project. We are, I'm appealing that if you can, once the project begins, you should donate some, in, be, be in the form of cash or the pad itself, mm -hmm. you can donate it to support this good cause so that we can make menstrual hygiene a safe space for right. all ladies. Right. All right. So, Mr. Thompson, um, how do we, ta how can we tailor like menstrual hygiene education programs to our schools? I mean, like, we talk about this every day. Every day we talk about menstrual hygiene and then period poverty. But sometimes it still feels like there's a, there are a lot of misconceptions. Like she said, she was laughed at. And that's not, that's not like long. It's not like long, you understand? She's, she, she's still a student. I can't say it happened like 10 years ago. Yeah. So in the world of today, why would somebody laugh at someone? Well, let me say that. Um, it is not only young girls and women who need sanitary or menstrual education. Mm -hmm. I think the education must even be extended to young boys yes. and men. Mm -hmm. A lot of men still have huge misconception about periods. About periods. Sure. You know, they, they're still superstitious, mm -hmm. you know, cultural, you know, discrimination. Mm -hmm. You know, when it comes to these, these things that you wouldn't expect in a society mm -hmm. in the 21st century. But they are very, very, very prevalent. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, you don't blame them. It's a cultural thing. But I think that once education goes down, um, you know, from the basic level to the secondary level, you know, there's continuous public education. Right. So people understand that periods are very normal. Right. It's a woman having her monthly thing. Yeah. And it is part and parcel of a woman. It is through which all of us come from because sure. without that, woman, women cannot make babies. Yeah. A lot of men don't understand. They think it's an abomination. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a crime that a woman yeah. have a period. You can't even enter some churches. Yes, you can't even do certain things. Yeah. You can't even... You can't cross rivers. Yes. yes. You know. And, yes. And, and, and so it, when you're on your period, you can't cross the other side. Even if it's burning at, behind you. And, <laughs> and it's absurd. And you can imagine some of the communities where basic children have to cross water mm -hmm. to go to school. And then when on the period, they say because you're in the period, you can't sit on a boat to cross the water to go to school. So the public education, and I think that um, um, there's bits and pieces of education out there, but it's not enough. And that's why um, I want to commend City mm -hmm. for bringing this conversation yeah. up again. And I hope that you get to partner yeah. us, you know, to extend the education yeah. out there, you know. Uh, to everybody in society, not just young girls, to everybody in society, so that when people understand their education, then they are, then they, they can, then they can have the empathy to support yeah, people yeah. who are underprivileged, yeah. that can't afford it, who can't afford, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and they can erase those misconceptions. Remember when the form, the former minister, uh, government introduced the free sanitary pad. Mm -hmm. Some of the commentary that came around that it was going to be used for women's part, were going to be used for rituals. All these things affect, you know, people's desire to either support such yeah. initiatives or to donate. You know, so we're appealing, you know, to benevolent Ghanaians, to companies, especially those who produce these yeah, um, parts, yeah. uh, 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 parts, you know, to reach out and donate as part of their corporate social responsibilities, mm -hmm. um, entities who cannot donate part, but they can donate other materials, such as sanitizers yeah. and things yeah. that are needed yeah. during all this period, can also reach out right. and support this initiative yeah. so that we can make little, little impact and contributions mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in helping alleviate 
uh, period, period poverty, poverty right. across the country. Right. So, Nihad, how is the Women's Commission of UPSA um, part of this? Okay, so the Women's Commission of UPSA is generally in charge of promoting the welfare of students on campus, especially mm -hmm. female students. Mm -hmm. So as part of our projects, we embarked on the Face of UPSA Beauty Pageant, which was generally centered on SDG 5, which is gender equality, right. and SDG 13, which is also on climate action. So. Our contestants were made to choose projects that were centered on these areas mm -hmm. and Leticia came up with um, the project on period power mm -hmm. and it is something that we all embrace since it's a challenge that most students face and even aside that as part of our duties as the Women's Commission we've been able to partner with Reflow Sanitary Pass right. where we provide sanitary pads for students at subsidized prices. So instead of getting the sanitary pad for 20 cities, you can get it at 12 cities wow. on campus, mm -hmm. yes. And like she said earlier, we are also embarking on providing pad banks on campus. So it should, it should be in partnership with her mm -hmm. as the face of UPSC, just to make sure that students on UPSC will be able to have access to affordable sanitary pads. Right, yes, right, please. right. I think, I think you are doing well. Well Thank done, you. well done. But how can people actually con um, contribute or send whatever they have? Okay. Um, I am going to leave like when I start my project, mm -hmm. it's starting mm -hmm. soon, and so I'm going to start with flyers where contact details. Um, yeah. All right. So you don't have the contact details right now. For now, right now. For now you can now reach you out can to reach the UPSA out to the Women's okay. Commission. Yes. So yes. you can put your so details. So how can they reach out to you? Your, 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 okay. your number. So if you are interested in taking part of in this project or helping us execute this, this project, you can contact us on zero five zero six nine six 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 one one zero five zero six nine six 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 one one, and we'll be happy to have you on board thank right, you right any final words <laughs> <laughs> okay um once again this is a call to all Ghanaians that we need everybody on board we have to make period a safe space for all young women thank you all right. any final words Thompson? yes i think um i just want to thank city tv mm -hmm you know, for always leading the charge right. in some of these very important social conversations mm -hmm. and for providing the platform for right. these girls mm -hmm. to also contribute into alleviating period poverty. Right. Okay, Miha? Okay. So I'd like to thank City TV too as well for giving us this wonderful platform to talk about this sensitive topic that has been bothering most women mm -hmm. and I would like to entreat all Ghanaians to also come on board. You don't have to um, be a wealthy person before you take part of this course but just one sanitary pad you can change your life. Thank right. you. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much ladies and gentlemen. Alright, so um, we've been speaking to Mensa Thompson, Executive Director of Alliance for Social Equity and Public Accountability. Leticia Yer um, Yerinchi, face of UPSA 2024 and Nihad Ibrahim, UPSA SRC Women's Commissioner and it's been about period poverty. I mean if you listen to the whole conversation um, it's a very important conversation that we just had and it's important that we keep talking about this so everyone will get educated on period, uh, periods, period hygiene, and period poverty, and how it affects each one of us. So, if you want to be part of this, if you want to help a girl out there, or two girls, or three girls, or more, please, if you have any part, you can start with one. Um, if your company that pro, um, produces parts, you can, you know, please send to them, help them, um, help them help others that cannot have access to these parts. Thank you so much.